What is up, guys? Um, why do I say um so much? The hole or the deck is uh, cleaned out now. I sanded everything down with 350 sandpaper or 320. I'm sorry. Basically, all you're after is kind of removing that top gloss layer to get promote uh, good adhesion on the next layer. So now that that is cleaned out, wiped down with the brushing thinner, now is going to be time to lay down the tape lines, which this is going to be a little bit time consuming because I want to make sure it looks good. And in addition to that, there's a lot of edges that need taped. So I'm just going to go ahead and use regular like 3M blue painters tape. I bought some of that green frog tape. Um, let me see if I can show you this stuff. I heard it's better at like crisp lines, but the more I thought about it, the uh, the blue painters tape is fine because even if the paint gets under a little bit, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna go over the whole thing anyway. It's basically just to keep kind of a, a hard edge where the non-skid is gonna stop. So the blue painters tape is gonna work fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that because it's cheaper. I'll just hold on to the green stuff for other stuff in case I have to do any. I don't know, whatever. So basically just to summarize what I'm going to do is all the straight edges are pretty cut and dry. Obviously you just go along the edge. Um, I'm going to use one inch tape. So that'll give me a one inch offset for the non-skid. I think that'll look good. Then in the areas where I need to put any kind of a radius, really my plan is to just lay it down at a 90 degree angle. You'll see. And then I'll come back with something. I'm just going to look around the shop, honestly for something that kind of matches the radius I'm trying to make. And then just take a razor blade and just kind of follow that feature just to give it kind of a nice radius. So other than that, it's just going to be kind of laying out the lines and uh, getting it ready for the non-skid. Let's get to it. Done. Non-skid is down. 
man that feels good I actually went a lot quicker than I thought honestly the worst part was just spreading the non-skid that's it you can tell down here towards the end um, coverage was a little spotty I think once it's covered in paint it's gonna look fine I don't think you're gonna be able to tell but man I was like right on the edge of having just the right amount I think if I went a little easier up in those first couple sections I would add plenty but I went a little heavy but again once it's painted I think it's gonna look fine so it's uh 20 after 10 so I'm gonna call it a night gotta let this set up and tomorrow I will go through and brush up with a clean brush all the excess that basically breaks loose from the paint probably gonna end up recovering like half of that bottle to be honest with you but that's how it goes so tomorrow i'll brush that up clean it up out of there and then i may even go through with a shop vac and a little like bristle or a uh, brush attachment and just make sure i got everything loose up and then it's gonna be time for coat number two of paint but this time over it's when i say two that sounds kind of weird because i already put one down and i kind of just put another coat down but this will be the, I guess I'll say this is going to be the first coat that will cover everything. So the seat boxes, the deck, everything, the non-skid, so everything. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. So I got in there and swept up the non-skid particles. Sorry, I sound funny. I got a little bit of a cold. Um, for those of you that were paying attention, probably noticed that there were a couple of spots right there and here, a little one there, that I guess I didn't have any fresh paint down in that area. I tried to make a hard line when I stopped so I could see where the paint ended when I was sprinkling out the non-skid and then make sure I went back over that <clears throat> to make sure it was wet. So again, a few spots I missed there. Um, there's a couple other small spots that weren't really missed, but it looks like the non-skid was just a little bit light. And then over here, I kind of found out that if you step on it um, and stay in that spot long enough, you kind of end up picking up some of the non-skid. So a little disappointed in that, but I think it's gonna be an easy fix. So everything's already sanded from before, so it's basically ready at this point. Well, I'm going to get in with a vac shop vac and a brush attachment and just get up anything else that I didn't recover. Oh, and speaking of recovering, I actually got back like half the container. So you can see you go nuts with it, but you get a lot of it back. But that doesn't really help me because I'm not doing another boat. So now I just got a half a container non-skid that... <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to hang on to, but so now that it, <coughs> excuse me, recovered what I can, I'm going to get back into the shop back and a brush attachment and just clean up anything loose. I'm not going to go nuts. I just want to make sure that there's especially nothing sticking around in the smooth areas. So when I go over the second coat of paint, I don't encapsulate some non-skid particles in those areas. So shop back it out and I'm going to get back in and I'm going to pull up the tape. Um, and at that point, it'll be ready for the coat of paint. All right, change of plans. Got the boat vacuumed out, and it's kind of standing there thinking about how I wanted to go about this. And uh, I'm I'm afraid that if I go to paint everything all at once, <clears throat> well, so let me let me back up. If I go through and paint everything at once, I would have to take off the tape right now. I'm afraid if I take off the tape, then some of the loose particles that are still in the boat that just didn't get vacuumed up and whatnot, when I go to roll it out, I'm afraid they're gonna get moved around and I'm gonna end up getting them in the smooth areas. 
and also in the spots I need to fix a couple of them are on a tape line so if I try and get like a nice clean edge there I'm not gonna be able to do that without the tape being there so I think what I've decided is I'm gonna go and just do a coat like a seal coat over the non-skid particles and then pull the tape off as soon as I have the paint down that way I'll keep all the non-skid particles where it's supposed to be and I'm not going to be rolling and tipping any of the smooth areas. And then I'll seal down the particles that are there and then it should be fine from there on forward for the next coat that I won't kind of contaminate the other areas with the particles. So that's the plan. Let me get my paint ready and stuff and uh, hop in and roll it out. going on everybody uh it is the next ish night can't remember that's yeah, two nights later actually ow so um little update the non-skid as you saw in the previous clips i did get the seal coat on but i started thinking about it and i was trying to figure out you know what this technically needs sanded between coats this interlux bright side paint so i was like well, crap, how do you sand non-skid without sanding through the non-skid? So I actually got on the phone today and called up uh, Interlux Technical Support and talked to them. And what they recommended was actually, um, it's a pretty clever idea. I, it's actually, to be honest, I was thinking something along these lines, but it's, it's good to hear it from their end as well. So... What they actually recommended is just kind of scuff it up as best you can with a 3M scouring pad or scotch Bright. I don't know if this is actually the scotch Bright name, but which is weird because it's actually a 3M trademark. But anyway, yeah. So he said it didn't really matter which one. They have the different colors. It's like red, gray, white, green. They're basically just different grits. So he said something in the medium grit range. So this is what I got. So... And I actually, over on my test panel, just before I started videoing, I, I had another kind of scotch bright pad laying over there, and I just kind of went over the non-skid. I just wanted to make sure that it's not going to just remove it all, like kind of just break it loose, and it seemed to be holding on fine. So I'm going to get in here with my little shoe covers, keep the deck clean, and uh, start kind of scrubbing over all this non-skid. And then we'll get in and probably end up just vacuuming it first, and then wipe it down with the... Uh, the thinner and it'll be ready for the second top coat um, so one thing worth mentioning in that second top coat is I can see sitting here now that the paints dry and it's kind of got more of a dull finish um, now that's kind of settled into the non-skid there's a few areas that are still a little light on the non-skid particles Let's see if I can show you here it's basically you can only see it because of the reflection so there's one there one there, it's one over here. It's really honestly the spots where I stepped in the non-skid, so I'm kind of beating myself up for that. Um, and it kind of just removed it, but that'll be an easy fix. When I do the next coat, I'll just mix in more particles there and kind of roll them into place and it should hide pretty well. Um, so that is the plan of attack. Now I'm probably not gonna do the second coat here for a couple of days, which doesn't matter to you because in video, a couple of days doesn't mean anything, but I actually ended up having to order another quart of the bright sides paint and that's going to be here on like Saturday. So I'm just going to get this prepped and ready tonight and then I may try and see if I can find something else to do while I'm waiting on the paint because I don't want to be sitting on my thumbs just kind of waiting for stuff. So all right, let me get you guys set up here and I'll uh, start scouring this up and show you 
How it goes? Time for coat number two. going on guys welcome back so it is actually a couple of weeks later so I've finally finished the paint it's down on the non-skid ended up putting down a second coat and then which is the last one you saw and then I put down another coat on top of that so there's a total of two coats on top of the non-skid particles and one underneath I guess and then I guess you could say there's three coats in the smooth areas just as a side note, for the astute amongst you, you may have noticed I'm not wearing my usual go-to hat today. I'm wearing my cool new favorite hat. Thanks, Lou and Halsey. Appreciate it. So, all right, let's wrap this one up by me showing you what it looks like. So let me uh, grab you here and take you over. Dun, 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 there it is. Hop up in here. I'm still afraid to walk on it because it's so clean. I don't want to get it dirty, but I <laughs> guess I'm going to have to someday. So that is it, guys. Turned out sweet. So you can see the nice gloss. It really leveled out in the uh, smooth areas. I mean, it's obviously not perfect, and honestly, the majority of that is just my sanding and smoothing and fairing, not necessarily the paint itself. If I was to do this on a mold surface of the hull, I'm sure it would look absolutely fantastic. The uh, the smooth areas, I'm I'm still happy with. They, I mean, you if you look at the reflection here, I mean, you can see the imperfections in the sanding and everything, but I don't care. I think it looks awesome. And then the non-skid is really impressive looking. It's hard to see on camera. I've seen this before. When you get up nice and close, it looks really good. Hopefully that's focusing. Focus. I'll just assume that's focusing. Um, so that is it. Like I said, there's two coats on top of the non-skid. Gives a nice, uh, nice grip, but it really firmed up the particles. After the first coat, they still felt a little rubbery. So that second coat, I think, is definitely necessary. So it feels really good to have that done. And like I said, it's actually been over a week later since I put down that third coat. I wanted to give it a good bit of time at least a week to just really set up before I get in here and do anything else at the risk of anything peeling up or anything like that just give the paint time to cure and get real hard so now that that is done guys it's time for basically reassembly and one of the things I did is came out here the other day after I finished this up and kind of started looking and planning around at where I want to start and I think I'm gonna start back here in the transom area because I want to get the motor in here more, more so just so I have more room in the garage here. It's been sitting on the other side of this tarp, which I guess I can take down now. And I just want to get it in here. So next plan is going to be get the power steering cylinder there mounted back to the transom plate. 
and then I'll pull this out a little bit out of the garage so I can get behind the transom and start doing all the the gimbal housing stuff, the bellows, uh, shift cable, that kind of stuff. So it's going to be some good info coming you guys' way. So, oh, I just remembered why I was talking about this in the first place. So all the wiring and stuff back here, a lot of the cable ties and things like that have holes in them so you can mount them with screws. Some of the old ones that are there, I'll probably cut those off because they're kind of brittle from UV and stuff like that. But I have some new ones. Um, but what I want to do is actually come back here along this area here all the way through both sides, the whole way across basically the inside of the mold where the swim platform is, and basically run a sacrificial piece of wood so I have something to screw to, whether it's cable management or hoses for bilge pumps or whatever, anything like that. I want to have a place where I can screw into and I'm not concerned about going into the new transom, the stringers, the deck. I don't want any of that penetrated. Now obviously this one here and this one here were built into sacrificial pieces for the bilge pump and battery boxes. So, I'm sorry, the uh, trim pump and battery boxes on this side. So those are taken care of, but anything back here like the, uh, the wiring with the um, zip ties and bilge pump hose and transducer wire and all that kinds of stuff, I just want a place to screw it in. So what I'm gonna do is just rip down a couple of pieces of MDO plywood that I have left over give them a few coats of paint with the uh, leftover paint I have, and then I'm going to glue it on with, um, I bought some Total Boat Fixoflex epoxy. It's epoxy you can put in a caulking gun and it mixes as it comes out the nozzle. So you guys will see that on the upcoming video, but that's where I'm at guys. I hope you found this helpful. I broke this into two parts because it's getting kind of long. It's a, it's a big undertaking. I mean, this whole new, paint on the deck with the non-skid it's it's not a one-day project especially with the sanding in between and all that so um, again I hope you guys found this useful and uh, don't forget to like subscribe share this uh, hit that bell for notifications and um, yeah I guess we'll see you on the next one see ya